in the line, right? Yeah, people can find it easier. You just follow the line, and and up you go. Now, sometimes when we lose them or they walk away after a big meeting or something, uh, I have like a friend, Bob and Kathy, uh, that come over from Santa Rosa and they watch all the time. Well, he brings a small halogen flashlight, and as long as your beam is kind of picking up and going out there with a little flashlight, it helps. And But now I've got green lasers and uh, Radio Shack has one. I don't know. Should they pay us extra for this advertising? <laughs> yeah, they should for you, yeah. anyway, yeah. at least. Yeah, they could send me some free lasers. <laughs> be fine. And and then uh, on on the um, computer, uh, a friend of mine ordered some extras and got me some, and and they're like seventeen dollars, and they're thirty amp or thirty whatever they are, and there's some fifties. So uh, now I'm taking them and attaching them to each one of the glasses. Ah, okay. The string, and then uh, you know, and then hopefully they don't keep disappearing after people come. You know. Tell, tell me about the third generation glasses, and there's a fourth generation coming out. Will that make a big difference? Well, the fourth generation from my friend Michael, that's in San Francisco, that has the night vision company. And uh, I trust a lot of his judgment because he, he really has knowledge and has been helping me out a lot. Uh, he says that, in theory, there's not really a fourth generation. It's kind of a hyped-up third generation uh. or enhanced. And there are some other things, but they're not available yet to the public. And the leery thing about the whole deal is that we can only get certain grade night vision in this country you can't ship it out of that country i didn't know that and and they they will give you seven years in federal prison for it and i have massive people want me to go to other countries and put on a sky watch there but the government will not let me exit with these glasses to show them. Well, these are military grade, right? Yeah, they're military grade, but still the technology uh, is like law enforcement offices and stuff use it. And our citizens are able to get them. When, when we see go. movies of of soldiers or police officers going into a, 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 a house totally dark, but you can see the green of their vision, right? You can right. see like how the soldier, because you see the, the tip of his rifle, for example, is, 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 uh, is, is gone. Is that the kind of goggles we're talking about, the kind of binoculars? Very similar. Okay. Uh, you see it in Iraq a lot, um, like uh, the guy's there and has his glasses up on his helmet or he's holding them in his hand and that. They're, they're called PVS-7s, military industrial grade how do they work ed well basically they're they're focusing and eliminating the light and they used to call them a starlight scope and now it's changed and and it's not basically infrared it's a process of collecting the light at different ranges and do that some night i'd like to to get michael who owns his company, uh -huh. and, and, and give him 15 minutes on your show, and, and I'm going to tell you, he could enlighten the world. This guy's a genius, you know. Enlighten the world? That yeah, wasn't a he, pun, was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me put it this way. The government is now making attempts. I don't know what it's going to be like after Obama, because there was A.B., and then there's <laughs> Obama. <laughs> yeah. But... um I'm going to I'm going to say that if the government's secret programs and stuff had their way they want to keep the citizens in the dark literally and yeah. these glasses puts the light on the darkness Oh no I mean, I, I'm I'm a believer in this you know I I'm 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 the not the skeptic 
But I go into these things, as you know, Ed, cautiously. I want the answers. I want the truth. I have never seen UFOs. I've talked about that on this program. And sure enough, when I was out there with you up on that roof, I saw two things I cannot explain. And to me then, that's the definition of a UFO. Well, actually, you saw three because that one that flew along, speeded up, Uh slowed up, stopped, and then took off and left. That was that was your first one, and that was a different type vehicle. The other two were different UFOs, ah. and so you've got you've got. Uh, I thought it was two. the second one. I thought was the same. So you're saying I had three that I was looking at? Yeah, the the other two, the other two that you saw was when you were holding the glasses on your own, and I was trying to show everybody stuff. Right, and. The first one that I showed you, I was telling you, this is how you look, and then, and I go, whoa, there's one right now. And uh, I pointed the laser, you followed up, looked at it, and was tracking it, and then it started to slow up, and then it stopped. And you said, where did it go? Yeah. That was your first one. And then you saw two more after that that were the Delta type. What's so remarkable about this, Ed, is that when you look at these, when you look at the sky through these, they're everywhere. I mean, it's it's not like you got to sit there for ten years and maybe you'll see one. I mean, they're they're there almost every time you go out and look. Well, I I have I I know George Knapp, Knapp, Knapp. whatever. He at the one conference you were there, you kind of stood up and took my side. But we had said, or Bob Oliver from the radio station Quantum Leap in uh, in uh, Monterey. Mm-hmm. He's he's been out with me a lot, and and uh, he he's getting pretty sharp at finding them, and and he every time I'd go out, I would find some for somebody, and the only thing it wouldn't be is if it was clouded over or rainy or the fog came in or that kind of thing. And there's so many different types. Uh, absolutely. And by the way, nice job, Jose Escamilla put together a, a, a incredible video with you called UFO Wars, and I want to talk yeah. about the shootout uh, after the break here, Ed. But uh, there is something going on up there, you know, and I don't know what it is, but we'll, well find out from you on why you believe that it's a uh, extraterrestrial war. Uh, I wonder, do you think that our astronauts, when they go up in the shuttle? They see these two. Yes, I, I, I think that uh, they're sworn to secrecy. And one of the things that you found out in the past, or people have talked about, and even gave me information because I'm taking their word for it. But many astronauts are members of the Freemasons and different mm-hmm. elite clubs, and so I think that they are probably sworn to secrecy. I think that we have a great fleet of military craft that belong to the world and is maybe managed by the U.S. government or the secret part of the government. And, you know, I've got to tell you that we are losing and others are losing, and the men that are flying those need to be recognized. There's, There's people out there that are really brave, and they're flying out into space, and they're guarding our world, they're flying out beyond that and they're losing their lives and not getting any recognition they're not getting notarized for for what their bravery is i mean how many people would want to fly out into space knowing that you may be lasered into a little piece of dust and never see your family or see earth again and those people need to have recognition they need credit I mean, when you talk about heroes and bravery, how about we strap you in an aircraft like that and yeah. send you out a million miles into space, and it's all being kept secret. In what percent of these UFOs that we see do you think may be man-made? Well, it, uh, see, man-made, I think there's humanoids all over the galaxy. And I I don't know which ones are peaceful and friendly or which ones want to take us over or which ones want to protect us. So I think that the good bulk of what I'm seeing now on patrol and circulating around the globe all the time is man-made. And I think our secret program 
has been producing them very heavily. All right, let's find out what's going on. Your opinion when we come back, Ed Grimsley. Hey, for just pennies a day, you can get Streamlink podcasts, downloads of past programs. That will expand, by the way. Just a neat... Uh... 